Hey guys, good evening. Um, this is Shannon Edie. Um, wanted to do another 100 with the wives. Just trying to keep it 100, talk about some real things that happen in marriage, some real experiences that we go through. And really, actually, um, this week, I wanted to talk about something that I know last week I spoke about something that me and uh, my friend Sunita talked about, but this week I really wanted to talk about um, something that another friend of mine, we talked about. My friend Wanda and I were on the phone. Hey, Lady Rose, how are you? Um, thank you for coming on and popping on the live. Um, one of the things that we talked about, actually I've talked about it with a couple of different wives, is just being walking in your calling. And we know as a couple, um, God places a calling on our marriages. We have um, a purpose for our marriages. It's not just for us to be excited and be cutesy, but God places a purpose on our marriage. When we say I do, there's a um, calling on our marriage, but then also as an individual, we as wives, we have a calling as well. And so for some wives, I've um, talked to them and they've been like, well, I, I know there's some calling on my life, but I just don't know what it is. And so for some wives, it's just kind of finding out what it is that God has called them to walk in. Um, you know, yes, we have that ministry and Lady Rose, if you know how to get someone invited onto the live, then please tell me because you would be a phenomenal person to come on and talk about this because... Uh, all right, Lady Rose is married to um, Pastor Godlock and they walk in ministry as a couple, but then he has a calling and she has a calling and they do that as well. And so um, for some wives, it's really hard for them to see like, what, what does God want me to do? Is everything about you know, how I serve my husband. And yes, God has called you to serve your husband, but God has also placed the calling on your life. Um, even if that calling is just really being a support and a, a friend to people in your circle, sometimes there are women in my circle who've been called, they're the ones who really, truly, when someone needs someone to talk, they can just they can just take it like you, I could sit there in tears and just pour out everything. And at the end of my tears, they're like, okay, all right, now, you know, and sometimes there is a calling where, you know, you have that one friend that may be really called in the area where they help you and certain things. So sometimes it's not a calling where. I'm saying that, oh, you're going to be in ministry here or doing something here on a large scale. It may just be in the everyday things, um, but definitely God has placed the calling on your life. And so my uh, friend Wanda and I were talking, let's see, it says should have a request button. I tried this so hard. <laughs> okay. Now I just activated the thing again. We're going to try this again if we can get it, but I activated it again. So if you um, see the request button pop up, then then go ahead and hit it and I'll see if it'll pop up on my end. But literally, I tried this like three or four times last week and it just did not do a thing. So, um, oh my goodness. I pray it does it this time. Maybe the, the anointing of the Holy Ghost is on Lady Rose's life is going to help me to break through this. <laughs> so basically... Um, what me and my friend were talking about is like, sometimes you have those people who do know that God has called them to do something, but then they're afraid to really step out and do it. Um, as a wife, as a mom, sometimes it, your kids have left the house, you know, and you're empty nesters. Um, but we use those different excuses because we become so comfortable in not doing it that we begin to put those different excuses out there and say, Oh, well, I can't do it because of this. And then when God removes that excuse, oh, but now I have this and I can't do it because of this. And then God removes that excuse. Oh, oh, but I still have, you know, such and such and I can't do it because of such and such. And so, hey, Sunita. Hey, Denise. How are you guys doing? 
Um, hey, Carol, my cousin Carol. Um, so let's see. I don't see a request. <laughs> Sunita's probably cracking up because we tried this last week. I don't see a request. Um, love you, Denise. I miss you too. Uh, let's see. And it's still, I don't know why this thing just, I don't know. It's not showing a request. We tried so hard last week. <laughs> and then here I go trying it again. Um, so one of the things that people say is one, that they don't know what their calling is. Um, some of the wives say that, oh, well, I feel like God is calling me to this A, B, or C, but um, I'm too busy. I have this to do. I have that to do. I have my husband um, and or I have my kids or I have my job. Um, and even sometimes when God removes those different things, they still say, oh, well, I have, you know, something else. Um, they make excuses. And then sometimes um, we have the wives that will know that God has called them to something. They begin to step out a little bit. And then they get kind of like nervous about stepping out. So they kind of jump back, you know, like I, I want to do this. I, I stepped out there and I may have done like one or two things. I kind of connected with some people and started a prayer group or I, I started a book club, um, what, what have, whatever. And then they sort of jump back. And so I, it's funny because when I say I have talked to several women who have been in that place where it's either like, I don't know what my calling is. I know I have a calling and I know that I think it's this, but I'm too busy or they make excuses. And then I've talked to the ones who they do a little bit, they jump out there, not jump out there, but they begin moving out there and then they get scared and they sort of draw back. They want to, you know, go back into the comfort place or the, the comfortable place. Um, let's see, Lady Rose. Nope, still can't see the request. Kawana, hey, Minister Kawana, you guys, I am definitely, Kawana, put your, um, the number for the call and then the, um, the password to get in so that that is at least in the comments because I definitely want to make sure that I talk about that before I close out um, so that people get on on Monday because she has a 10 day prayer and fast for the wives that's going on right now. And when I say this week was so powerful and so rich and so, I mean, something for every wife, if you just got married, if you've been married for 20, 30, 40 years, um, if you're happy in your marriage, if you are struggling in your marriage, if you're in between and you just kind of like, eh, I don't know, we're right there in the middle. Um, there is like something for every single wife and we are praying, we are fasting. It starts at 6.50 in the morning and goes to 7.30. It's Monday through Friday. So this weekend, there won't be any call this weekend, but Monday morning at 6.50, we'll be back on the call. And I'm telling you, every single speaker has been just phenomenal. Um, and then next week there are more speakers coming that are going to be on the call every morning. It's just phenomenal. So Lady Rose says, uh, they are not walking in confidence of who they are called to be outside of husband's calling. And truly, truly, that is something powerful. Um, because I had to, when we got married, I thought that being the good Christian wife meant that. I basically, everything was about my husband. Everything was, you know, whatever he said, whatever he wanted to do, however, you know, like just everything was about my husband. So much so that when we met, I was in a church and he actually came and joined the church I was in. So those people there knew me longer than they knew him. But I went from being called Shannon to... Minister Conrad's wife by people who knew me longer than they knew him by people who knew me before there was an us. 
And I really, I think I did that to myself because I had this mindset of I had to sort of silence myself and what I felt like I was supposed to do to just 100% feed into what he was doing. And it just wasn't healthy. It wasn't healthy. And I don't feel like that was what God called us to do. That I don't feel like that was what God called me to do. It actually wound up making me miserable, making him miserable. Um, it wasn't a good thing for our family or our relationship overall. But we have sometimes those people who, um, you know, you get into marriage, uh, you get married, you're a wife now, and you're a Christian. And we know what the Bible says about submission. So, and we know what the Bible says, um, you know, about us being a help meet. Um, and so people spin that to say everything has to be about him and that you no longer have your individuality, that you're totally absorbed into, I have become Minister Conrad's wife and I should be happy with that. And I was happy being his wife, but there was part of me that was feeling like I'm not fully living up to what God has called me to do. So, um, it's, it's funny because talking with those different women over the last couple of weeks that um, talk about calling and talk about, you know, what they're feeling and how they feel called as a wife in different areas, walking and calling, walking in my calling has to line up with his, right? We're not in competition. And that's something powerful right there. We're not in competition. Um, everything that we do should enhance um, each other. God doesn't call us to be, you know, split in a, as our household. So God does it in a way where each individual calling, it, it complements one another. Um, and same here, but Daryl corrected that. It actually has to do more with seasons. Timing is crucial. Wow. See, y'all got to help. I got to figure out how to get people in on this because y'all are just so powerful. Um, also, Minister Kawana says, I can email the prayer calls from this past week. You definitely want to get those emails because that is just super, super powerful. Um, yes, I got to figure, I'm going to call Facebook. I'm going to just have to call Facebook and be like, listen, how do I do <laughs> this? Because this is so good. This is so good. Um, yeah, I, I've heard so many women, so many wives talk about this and it just kind of was something I was like, you know, we have to really be honest, be real. And, and sometimes get like 100 with the wives to say, listen, um, we all go through this or many of us have gone through it at times where we were where you are, where I was at a place where I was thinking, okay, everything is just totally 100% under him. And I just, you know, have to just silence what is within me that feels like I should be doing more in, in, in anything, in ministry and anything. Um, yes, I am on my phone and it says, it says, Hmm. Keep sending requests. I forgot. I don't know. I am on the phone because they said I can't do it from a computer and invite people in. They said I have to be on the phone. Um, so yeah, I, we have people who've been where you are and um, are now at the place where they are really walking, beginning to walk and calling and they're calling and it's just really, I was like, you know, so much we we hold these things. We deal with it as wives and, and a lot of times we hold them or we will talk about it with a few girlfriends or a sister or two, but then we kind of just, it's not something that we talk about all the time. And I'm just the person that, you know what, I will talk about my flaws and I will say, hey, there were times I did not get it right. Um, yes, I do see an invite thing, but there's no button beside it. Nothing beside it. Hey, Pastor Rollins, how are you? Um, and so I'm one of those ones that we'll talk about where I messed up, where I made mistakes, because for me, if it helps someone else that doesn't, you know, doesn't have to either go through it or it can help them come out of whatever they're in, then hey, 
you know, I'll talk about my flaws. And so that's really why um, I started getting online and really talking on Wives Empowered about some of the things that we discuss as girlfriends or we discuss as sisters in Christ. And we really um, discuss things that are real in marriage. But then some wives have to hear it. You know, there are other wives who may have to hear it. And so that's why I just said, okay, well, I'll get on and I'll start talking about all of the crazy stuff, stupid stuff that I've done to sort of derail my marriage and what I've learned from. And then hopefully if I can in some way get (laughs) these people on, invited on and get them um, to talk, because I said, I shared either in my first post or the second post, I shared how uh, Lady Rose and Pastor Godlock were a phenomenal help in counseling us and helping us in our marriage. And so, um, and yes, if you are having issues, find find someone. I I believe in going and finding someone who you can go to counseling with, who you can be accountable to. Um, No, I'm not saying you have to tell everything, all the business about your marriage to everybody. No, we don't need to do that, but we definitely need to be able to have people we're accountable to and that we talk to. And even in me figuring out my calling, that came through me talking with the women around me. That came through me, um, you know, being able to communicate with other women around me and see, okay, God just began to poke me like, okay, well, yeah, sometimes people may be like that Shannon, she just does not know what to say out of her mouth. And truly, maybe that's true. Sometimes, yes, that is true. But then sometimes I just have to say it because I mean, that's the only way we're ever going to grow. I had a, um, a group that I had to do with some of my clients and it just got to the place where, you know, when people give you those answers that they think you want to hear, it's like, come on, let it go. I don't even want to hear that. We are never going to grow unless we get real and we get honest. And I can be honest and say that there are things in my marriage that I did that were just immature, that just made no sense. It was, um, tearing apart my relationship. And then um, that may help somebody else um, who's doing the same thing. And so in me beginning to really walk in my calling, I still 100% support my husband in everything that he does and in everything that we do together. I still 100% um, am his biggest cheerleader. I'm still you know, fully committed to everything that we are called to as a couple. But also individually, I've been learning. I won't say I've arrived because I'm definitely learning my calling. I stepped out at one point and was super afraid. I knew God was calling me to really pull together wives to support one another. And it was something that he had been telling me to do for like two, two and a half years. And then all of a sudden, um, Charmaine Carter, she started wife up and I was like, wow, you know, this is exciting. And this is what God was telling me to do too, is to really have something for the wives. And, um, Charmaine was a big part of encouraging me like, Hey, don't stop. Still do what God called you to do with the wives, because what he called me to do is this, but what he called you to do is that. And there are so many wives out there that we can really help wives a lot more wives if we're both walking in our individual callings um, and supporting one another. So that was a big push for me to step out and start Wives Empowered. And I did, I remember being on the phone with my friend Gail Hawkins, um, Lady Gail. I I mean, this, this lady pushed me as well. And I was telling her, I say, I'm just I feel like the Holy Spirit is just telling me to do this. And I'm just, I'm just gonna step out there. I'm just gonna do it. I'm a, I'm a announce it and tell people, meet me at AHA on this Saturday on at, at this time. And I'm just going to do it. And she was like, okay, okay. And she talked it through with me. And um, after I we talked it through, I said, okay, I'm going to do it. And I put it out there. And Charmaine was really a big part of helping me to put it out there because she actually created the first flyer and did the first Eventbrite. I didn't know anything about Eventbrite, just like I don't know anything about Facebook Lives. I was like, 
tripping and stumbling over stuff, but I did it and God blessed where there have been some phenomenal wives who have come through, who've spoken and sown into other wives and poured into other wives. I've grown myself as a wife. I could not have in a million years um, seen myself getting on a video live and just trying to talk to whomever that would tune in um, before this happened. I just was, um, I was super shy, um, super scared, and I did it and stepped out there. And part of me did want to run and hide at times. Part of me did want to withdraw and say, no, 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 God, I did that one and that's it. I can't, I can't do anymore. Um, and then recently God told me, well, get some women who you know are in leadership, whether that's in leadership in business and leadership in ministry and leadership in their community, just get them together on Tuesday nights and just pray for them and then just encourage them. Not, you know, it's not like a Bible study. It's not anything. Just encourage them and be in prayer for them. And so I began doing that. And when I say God has just blessed so much and allowed me to grow even more um, as a wife and in ministry and like just in my prayer life, because now I'm committed to praying for these women not just on Tuesday, but praying for them in my personal time as well. And so it's just something God began just pulling out of me more and more and more. Oh my gosh, Lady Rose said we should pull up in the IHOP parking lot. Yes. And keep our mask on. Oh, Teresa. Hey, honey. She said, I miss our IHOP sessions. I miss, I miss our IHOP sessions, but I, I gotta say, I don't miss the food. Okay, Lady Kawada said, uh, let's see, each ministry is unique and work for kingdom building. It's all for his glory. Yes, indeed. Oh my God. Minister Barbara, praise the Lord. Thank you for joining us. She said, I'm inspired and encouraged. God bless you. God bless you too. So God is so good. Just, um, I want to encourage you guys. Hopefully you could kind of in between me talking and trying to figure out this whole Facebook live, um, thing that you were able to, um, kind of get an encouragement, like wherever you are at right now as a wife, understand that you do have a calling as a wife. God has placed the calling on your marriage. He's also placed the calling on you, whether that be in your family, in your community, at your job, at your church, wherever that is, God has a calling on your life. And there are ways to grow and mature in that calling. I've just talked about my own experience. Um, there are women of God that definitely you can connect with that will help you to um, just kind of grow in that. Um, and even if you just want to inbox and just say, you know, Shannon, can you just pray for me that I will um, kind of figure this out or learn what my calling is or how to walk in my calling? Definitely, I'll be keeping you in prayer. So thank you guys so much for getting on tonight. I always try and keep it short because I just do not like long-winded posts. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, uh, Minister Kawana. She's like, yes, I have been encouraged. Wives empowered to socially distance. <laughs> we empowered to socially distance. We still empower. We still can. and prayerfully, all of you guys are keeping safe. If you guys are mothers, please have a wonderful Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to you all this Sunday. And definitely, Minister Kawana put up the information for the call. It's going to start on start back up on um, Monday morning at six fifty a.m. And um, she has put the phone number. Look, I'm trying to. Y'all can see how you know, jacked up. I am trying to find this while on the live. Look, I can't even hear screenshots. Nope. It's, oh yes, it's right there. Okay. Okay. So you're going to call 848-220-3300. And the access code is beauty. So you can figure that out from dialing the B-E-A-U-T-Y on your keypad but definitely um get on next week 
um, on Monday at 6.50 in the morning. And I'm telling you, it's going to bless your life. Um, Lady Rose, if you still do your um, Diva Den, oh my gosh, she has some really good topics that she was doing um, on her radio show that I think would definitely bless you. Hey, Miss Tiffany. Hey, T, how are you? So good to see you and happy Mother's Day to you too. Happy Mother's Day, ladies. Like I said, I'm not going to keep y'all long. I love you guys. Have a great weekend and definitely walk in your calling.